And hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is, of course, the Movie Pit Podcast. I am your host, Christian Renseria, and today's podcast, as you can tell, it is another reaction pod. I have not one, I have two movies for you. That's right, two movies uh, that I watched recently. Of course, one of them is Argyle, and the other one is One More Shot, of course, one being a big budget blockbuster movie out in theaters, and the other one being an independent action movie sequel shot in one continuous take. So let's go ahead and get to these movies. I'm going to start off with One More Shot. It is a sequel to One Shot. Um, it, like the first movie, it was shot in one continuous take. That's kind of the approach they took. It'll make it look like it was done in one continuous uh, take. The sequel picks up uh, after the events of the first movie. So I guess I'll get a little bit spoilerly and a little bit spoil, little spoilers, not too much. Um, just, but just enough to kind of get you in, in the right uh, frame of what's going on. So it picks up after the events of the first movie. The movie brings back director and co-writer James Nunn and lead actor Scott Atkins as Navy SEAL Jake Harris, who after the events of the first movie is brought to Washington, D.C. with the suspected terrorist Amin Mansour so he can be interrogated about the dirty bomb that was mentioned in the first movie. Uh, however, when Jake thinks his job is done, when he hands Mansour over, the emptied airport is suddenly overtaken by a group of mercenaries there to take Mansour with them, and Jake is the only real line of defense. I am a big Scott Atkins fan. I think if you've heard this podcast enough, you know I'm a big action fan. Scott Atkins is one of those guys. And I don't think it's an insult to say this because he's kind of embraced it from what I've seen online. Um, Atkins is the king of direct-to-video independent action movies. Uh, he's got the look. He's got the ability uh, because he's a real martial artist. And he's a pretty decent actor when he's given the opportunity and when he's given uh, good material. Um, so I liked one shot uh the first movie because it it took the ambri- the ambitious approach to make it look like it was one continuous take and if you're like me you can probably tell where they made cuts uh there's one very obvious one in the first movie but here in the sequel uh one more shot uh it it looks very very seamless like you can probably tell where they made the cuts And the restarts because there's a lot of like dark corners and like hallways in here and like things they the camera cuts across so you can tell that's probably where they made the cut but it is very very seamless uh here they did a much better job of making it look like it was one continuous take here in the movie and there's no like big like real setup that they do like in the first movie here in the sequel if you saw the first movie you probably know exactly what i'm talking about uh but here in the sequel it's very seamless like you don't it's very hard to kind of it's not very hard you probably tell where it is but if you're not used to you know that kind of filmmaking or those kind of takes or anything like that it could probably be a little hard to be like okay where do they you know set the camera up and where do they restart everything uh so on that regard that the, the movie gets a lot of points for me any movie that takes you know the approach and um the the i don't want to say the goal but the opportunity and the risk of doing one continuous take is pretty cool because those are very hard and you know you've had actors you know say it's very hard because if you mess it up and especially if you mess it up like at the tail end you got to restart all over again so that's pretty cool and to do it for an action movie is you know obviously again very very ambitious now action wise it's pretty decent uh the majority of it is shootouts uh, we do get some hand-to-hand stuff because it is Scott Atkins, of course. Uh, and I will say, if you see the cast list, you know, in the beginning of the movie, they run down the cast as well. You see that Michael J., uh, Michael Jaw White is in the movie. Big fan of Michael Jaw White as well. And he is probably, he's like third listed, I think, in the movie, or like second listed in the movie. And he's in the movie for like five minutes total. If that, maybe a little bit more. I don't. I originally I put in my notes like ten minutes. I don't think it was ten minutes. I think he had like five minutes of screen time. He's in the begin. He's in the movie when they take over the airport, and then he's in the movie at the end to have a little skirmish with um with Scott Atkins. And I'm a little disappointed in that. I mean, you got Michael Jai White and you got Scott Atkins. If you you know you're familiar with your you know independent action movies, you know that they work together a lot they have you know they have a very good friendship and they work together a lot triple threat they uh undisputed two which is kind of when atkins started kind of rising the fame and started kind of taking the the title of um uh, of 
uh, you know, king of the independent movies. So I was a little disappointed in that. And Tom Berenger is also in the movie. He plays like a, a CIA person. I forgot his title in the movie, but he plays like someone from the CIA who is there at the airport with them. Plot wise, it is a little thin. Uh, the reveal and motive of the villains is kind of just meh, uh, which leads to one of the, one of my problems with the movie when I watched it, and maybe my main problem with the movie, besides you know the fact that it's it, the movie's you know mainly just shootouts and not hand to hand stuff like the first movie. First movie had a very good mix of like shootouts and hand to hand stuff. This one not so much. The movie just kind of ends. Now, I don't want to, you know, I didn't do my research too much about the movie. Like, I knew the movie was coming out. I saw the trailer. But I didn't, like, look into it, like, what the plot was of the movie. I thought it was just, like, some other person that he was, you know, going. Because in the first movie, he's, like, you know, he's a Navy SEAL. But he's also part of this team that's protecting him. And they're kind of, like, they're protecting him. But they also are there to, like, protect everybody else around. Uh, I forgot, like, what exactly the, the, the wording was that they used in the movie. But... I didn't realize that this movie picked up, it literally picks up hours, hours after the first movie. Because in the first movie, they're in Poland, and in this movie, they're in Washington, D.C. And they're literally getting off the plane in the movie, uh, when the movie starts off. So however long it takes from Poland to watch, I was going to look that up, but I forgot. However long that takes, that's how long it's been between the events of the first movie and the second movie. And I mentioned this. And I mention this because I don't think they thought that the first one would be uh, popular or got as popular and got the reception that it did because the first ending is fine. Like the first, the, the ending to the, to the movie, it makes it seem like, yeah, they can go on another venture, but no, it, it's, it's, it's not necessarily too open-ended, the first movie. So when we got the sequel and it was the same thing, it's like, oh, so it, it, is this going to follow the trend? And unfortunately it does because the ending feels like they're ready and they told you, hey – like production wise, like the studios, like, Hey, you're getting a third movie. So be mindful of that with your ending. Cause that's what it feels like, which I don't mind. And I feel like that's becoming a common trait in Hollywood now with franchises. Like let's end the movie, you know, on a, you know, kind of open ended note and go from there. Right. We see that we've seen that a lot in last year's movies and hopefully that doesn't become a trend because that's kind of, it's, I don't want to say it's annoying and it's bad, but at the same time, it's like, I just want to see the ending to, to your movie. If you have a sequel, great. But there's ways you can end the movie and still have it open-ended for a continuation to the next one. And, and they just don't do that here. So, I don't know. Uh, if they ended it like the first movie, I think, you know, when it's kind of like it ends, but it, maybe it's a little open-ended, that would have been great. Here, it's like, no, there could probably be another one. Like, there's more story to tell here. And they make it very obvious also, like, before the ending. Like, someone literally says, you don't know how big this goes. And there's no resolution to that. <laughs> uh, so, um, and they introduce like this weird boss character that we never see. And it's just like, why, why would you do that? So like, okay, you have a third movie then. But it has been announced that there's a third movie. So I'm just wondering like, you know, when we'll get that announcement. But there you go. Overall, I enjoyed one more shot. I don't know if I enjoyed it as much as the first one. I think I probably had to go back and watch, you know, watch them back to back again. But I thought it was fine. I thought it was okay. It, it threw me off at first because I didn't know it was like a direct sequel. And then the ending kind of made me mad. So I thought it made me mad. It just annoyed me. So there you go. That's one more shot. All right. Let's move on to the next movie, which, of course, is uh, Argyle. Matt D. Vaughn's newest film, Argyle. Now, I want to know who gave this movie a fair shot. Because I saw a lot of you talking some crap before the movie even came out. Because you saw the trailer too many times. And on top of that, people, you know, aren't necessarily the biggest fan of of, of Vaughn's style. So the movie had some things against it. But uh, in in terms of, like, you know, seeing the trailer too many times, I'm going to be honest here about that. Because I think I saw the trailer for Argo a lot. But I have not seen it as much as the kingdom of the planet of the apes trailer i'm excited for that movie i want to watch that movie because i really liked the previous trilogy they did but i have seen that trailer for almost every movie i've seen and i'm starting to dislike the trailer and i i know that won't play a factor because i'm not that kind of person that's like oh i've seen the trailer so many times or oh i think the trailer sucks it's gonna you know you know affect my movie watching no that's not gonna be it I'm just sick and tired of watching that trailer and I'm excited for the movie. So that should tell you something. I mean, we also had the strikes, so, you know, they couldn't really work on anything and they didn't know, you know, when it was going to end. So they got to keep, you know, 
playing the same trailer over and over again. So there is that. Now we're, we're, we're kind of back on the, on the ball on that. So hopefully, you know, what, yeah. so you don't have to watch the trailer anymore, I guess, unless you go watch an older movie and the trailer was connected to it. So personally, let's get back to uh, Argyle. Personally, I have liked or enjoyed uh, Vaughn's movies. Uh, and the crazy thing is that he hasn't really been directing or he hasn't directed for that long. I look back at his filmography and for some reason I thought he has, he has directed more, but no. Uh, so he started in 2004 with Layer Cake, which introduced us to Daniel Craig, which was great. Uh, 2007 Stardust, which in the last few years I, I feel has gotten a resurgence. Because I don't remember really, really that many people talking about Stardust when it came out. Or maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Uh, but that movie's gotten a resurgence. In 2010, he gave us Kick-Ass, which I think was the beginning of uh, having Vaughn be kind of a, a name in, in the industry. And then the movie that really put him on the map, I feel, was 2011, the, the following year, with X-Men First Class. Which I am a, I will go on and admit that I very much liked X-Men First Class. Uh, when it first came out and and... and since then uh, and i know a lot of people have a problem with it because they killed um darwin uh which to be fair uh, i was not familiar with darwin from the comics as that was the character i never came across when i was reading comics so um i wasn't really upset about that but i can see why you would be upset why other fans would be upset about that okay uh then the big one 2014 of course was kingsman that made him you know a household name directed the sequel in 2017 and the last, his last actorial effort was the prequel to the Kingsman movies, uh, The King's Man, in 2021, which admittedly um, was just okay. I, I wasn't the biggest uh, fan of that one. Uh, so Vaughn likes his spy movies, obviously. He, he's admitted to that he, he is a big you know spy f- uh, fan, um, likes the James Bond movies, and he wanted to do a little twist on them. And Argyle, again, meant to be you know an homage to those old spy movies with, of course, his own style, which he brings. Uh, so, story-wise, plot-wise, we follow Ellie Conway, uh, played by Bryce Dallas Howard, a writer who writes very popular and successful series of spy novels called Argyle. But when she suddenly hits writer's block, she decides to go out to meet her mother, played by Catherine O'Hara. But on the train, she runs into an actual spy named Aiden, played by Sam Rockwell, who thrusts her into the real world of spies because... Uh, her book series have actually happened in the real world, and because of that, it makes her a target for a secret government organization run by Brian Cranston's director, Ritter, who want her to write, of course, the next chapter. Uh, so, of course, one of the big things going into the movie was the mystery, right? Uh, who is the real Agent Argyle? In Ellie's books, which we see played out in her head, Argyle is played by Henry Cavill. But the trailers play it out like there's a real... Agent Argyle, so that is one of the, the mysteries that we have. Now, I won't reveal the mystery, because I don't want to, you know, get too into the spoiler territory range, but this movie, I think, makes the grave mistake of <laughs> kind of revealing it at the beginning of the movie, and whether you're paying attention or whether you're like, that can't be right. So, I, I don't want to say too much more than that, but it, it, they, they, they kind of reveal, and, and I think they kind of, with the reveal, they're like, yeah. Maybe you're not paying attention or, you know, maybe, you know, it's kind of a ploy. It, it, it ruined, you know, the actual reveal when it happened. And the reveal is just, it's, it's just kind of meh. It's just a meh reveal. It's, it's not, you know, again, because of everything that kind of just plays out afterwards. It's like, okay. Um, and I, I will and say it right now. I will, I will spoil this part. It's not the cat. I know a lot of people were thinking it was the cat. Or something having to do with the cat. No. The cat has nothing to do. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the twist at all. Absolutely nothing. It's just a cat. It is just it's a red herring. The big I, I don't even know. I wouldn't I wouldn't even consider it a red herring. It's just it's I don't know, it's weird. Uh the rest of the movie, it's fine. It's it's the movie is just fine. It, it's it, it's a little too long. I will admit that it, when I, I didn't even know how long this movie was until I bought my ticket and I saw that it was like two hours and twenty minutes. I didn't think it would be two hours twenty. I, I thought maybe it would be a little over two hours, maybe like you know two five or something like that. No, it's two hours and twenty minutes. This movie did not have to be that long. They could have cut some stuff out or trimmed some stuff down because it didn't need to be two hours and twenty minutes. The movie's mainly held together by Sam Rockwell. 
uh, and and even Bryce Dallas Howard. I, I think they're good together. It was nice seeing Sam Rockwell in a role like this because he doesn't usually, you know, when you think of Sam Rockwell, you think of him like, you know, in the, you know, indie dramas or even some indie romance movies, but you never really expect him as an action star. And, and, and you know, that it was an interesting cast choice, but um, I think Sam Rockwell, you know, handled it very well and he performed it very well uh, as well. So I don't know, I guess give Sam Rockwell more action stuff. I think it looks like he can handle it. So, uh, and if he wants to do it, obviously. But uh, the movie does stumble itself, uh, stumble over itself. I think the length doesn't do it any justice, and, and, and it's not for the better for the most part. It's dumb fun. I, I you know I heard some people saying calling it some you know like a dumb fun romp movie, and I, I think that's where it is. It, 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 get, it really gets on the border of being dumb fun, and I think at some points it sticks its neck out over the line a couple times, and sometimes it it can't reel it back in. And other times, it's like, nah, you know what? We're going for the crazy. You know, you you you're you're familiar with my style. You've seen the Kingsman movies. Let's get a little wacky, uh, especially like there's one moment near the end where I'm like, they really did that. Wow, okay, because it's it's not you know overly crazy. You know, it's very grounded for for the most part. And then it gets to a certain part near the end, and you're like, okay, they did that. All right, uh, that's not what I was expecting. And then there's the ending. Uh, I, I, again, not going to spoil the ending, but the ending happens and it's just, it adds an unnecessary layer to the movie because by, by that point, obviously it's, 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 again, it's the ending. We already have kind of our resolution, right? We know what's going on. We, we know what happened kind of, you know, we kind of, we, we get like a nice little, the way it's set up, it's a nice little bookend to, you know, what, to the movie and, and, you know, telling off, you know, not telling off, but telling kind of the, the hopeful future for what the characters are. And then they do something that is completely bonkers. <laughs> it, it, it throws everything off. It's, it's a, again, an unnecessary layer to this movie that you did not need. They didn't need to put that in there because it, I'm sure when they wrote it, it was like, a, oh, they're going to, people are going to react like, oh, what's going on? What, what's going, what's happening? And it doesn't come off that way. It comes off more like, what? what why? What, 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 is, what does this mean then for the rest of, like, what, why? So you're left with that befuddlement of <laughs> that feeling um, that I gave you so expertly well. <laughs> um, but it, it, it adds an, unnecessarily, an unnecessary layer to a movie where it was closing off everything. And it, you just didn't need it. And I'm not saying it's an FU ending. Uh, although I did hear someone say that it's an FU ending. I didn't see it that way. It, 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 for me, it was just, it was unnecessary. It, it really was unnecessary. And then there's a post credit sequence that still, again, does not make sense. It's just another unnecessary layer to the movie that ends it the way it ends. The way it ends is fine. And for some reason... They just took it that extra step further, but they didn't need to. Um, so yeah, that that's that that's my thought. If you watch the movie, you want to know my thoughts on the ending. That's my thoughts on the end. It's unnecessary. It's an unnecessary layer. It's an unnecessary layer to an ending that was already just fine for what it was. I'm not gonna call Argyle a disappointment or even the worst movie of the year, like some people are already calling it, even though it's only February and there hasn't really been a lot of movies. I'll say I, I enjoyed it more than Night Swim, which I you know came out at the beginning of January. I probably enjoyed it a little bit more than uh, what was it, uh, ISS, which coincidentally both movies Ariana DeBose is in them. Ariana DeBose has a very small role in this movie. They could have gotten anybody else in this movie, and they got Ariana DeBose who has like two minutes of screen time. <laughs> John Cena also has like maybe five minutes of screen time, maybe a little bit more. Henry Cavill not in the movie as much. He's not in the movie as much as you think, um, and I, that's probably, I don't know if that's a good thing, I don't know if that's a bad thing. I saw some people being like, oh, Henry Cavill's not a star because Argyle failed at the box office. It's like, he wasn't in the movie that much. Like, it's not, it's not you know, like, I, maybe because they were selling it on him a little bit. They were also probably sell, they were also selling it on the mystery, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not gonna blame I'm not gonna blame Henry Cavill for a movie that he's in it for like 10, 15 minutes total. So I'm not gonna blame him for that. Um, it's a dumb fun. It's it's not a super serious action spy movie. 
it, it's you know I, I don't I don't even think I'd put it on the level of the King of the Kingsman movies. I I don't think I would put it on that level because I think the Kingsman movies know how outlandish they are. This one was trying to set itself in reality and ground itself again until it hits a certain moment. Where it's like nah, screw that. Uh, <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, it's fine. It's it's probably a little too long. It does stumble upon itself a lot. I, you know, it's only February. I'm not gonna call it the worst movie of the year. I'm not even gonna call it a disappointment because I haven't seen that many that many new movies yet. But of the movies I have reviewed, I enjoyed it more than Night Swim. I enjoyed it more than ISS. So there's that. But again, that's just my opinion. I, I don't know. And again, I tend. I will say this over and over again, and I will say this every time, you know, we talk about new movies or any movies like that, especially movies that, you know, have people on the fence, because it's very on the fence here. There's a lot of people when the embargo was lifted for this movie that really, really enjoyed it. And there was then the other half of the people that were like, this movie's not good. (laughs) Um, I'm kind of in the middle. You know, I can see the problems with it. I can see why people wouldn't like it. I have my issues with it, you know, having let it sit with me and probably hearing some other people's opinions. Uh, or what they, you know, at least thought of the movie. But I'm always going to have my own opinion, and I'm always going to carry my opinion, and I'm very much in the middle. I tend, like, and as I was about to say, I tend to enjoy a lot more movies. A lot more movies. I tend to enjoy a lot more movies than most people. And that probably, you know, makes my opinion, you know, less valid to some. But, um, hey, you're listening to my podcast. So, <laughs> um, I don't know where I was going with that. I That, that was totally on the fly. Um, but it's um yeah i don't know i mean it's 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 not good but it's not overly bad i I highly doubt that argyle will be the worst movie of the year on anybody's list will it be on those you know least liked movies of the year probably maybe because you know some people will do that but maybe some people will forget by the time it comes out maybe maybe it'll have you know some second chances online when it hits you know apple tv or something there you go would i recommend it I guess as long as you know it's kind of dumb fun, you know, as long as you know there's there's a couple twists in here. It's not just the reveal of who the real agent Argyle is. There's another twist in the movie that's it, it you if I think if you're again if you're paying attention enough, you probably could figure it out cuz I think I figured I figured it out. I was like, "Huh. They're not going to do that, are they?" And and they did. So, uh I don't know. Um I guess I don't. I, don't, I mean, if it's, if it's like a matinee, and it's like the middle of the day, and there's like nobody there, you just want to have a theater to yourself. Go watch Argyle. That's probably not the most you know convincing argument to make for this movie, but that's that's what I'm going with. So uh, that is all I got for Argyle uh, and one more shot. Both of them were sort of recommends, I guess. Wait, you know, I mean, obviously, one more shot's a you know you got to rent or buy that on VOD. So, but um, yeah, there you go. Uh, I don't think I will have a review next week uh or maybe i will because next week is lisa frankenstein and admittedly not very much looking for that movie i probably will watch it um because you know i like watching new movies but uh i don't know if i'll do one maybe i'll hold off on lisa frankenstein for the end of the month uh to kind of do like a wrap-up of of february of movies i watched but uh obviously i'll keep you updated on that but uh, yeah, that's it. Argyle, one more shot. What did you think? Did you watch them? Did you like them? What were your opinions? Let me know on the socials. Uh, make sure to follow the podcast. Subscribe to the podcast on all platforms. Links are all, of course, down below in the description slash show notes area. Thank you so much for listening uh, this week. Uh, there's two in a row. I, I, I said I was going to do it, and I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm keeping my word as much as possible. So uh, thank you guys so much for listening. It's February already. It's it it is. It's February already. Uh so <laughs> we'll uh we'll see you guys next week and uh hope you have a good week and uh be safe, be good people, and as always, go watch some movies. Woo-hoo! Yeah! Give it up! Movies! <laughs>